subscribers will know that normally on this channel we talk a lot about fighting games and fighting game mechanics and stuff like that. But today, we're going back to my first true video game love, role-playing games. Normally of Japanese variety. I've been playing a whole lot of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, almost too much if I'm being honest about it. And I've seen a lot of discussion about the combat system and how they changed it to make it more modern compared to the truly only turn-based style that existed in the past. So in this video, we're going to take a look back at some different historical uses of turn-based combat and how different games did it in different console generations and take a look at if that still has a place in video games as we play them today. Obviously, Square Enix didn't think that Final Fantasy VII could rely on the old turn-based style of the past. So let's start there with the original Final Fantasy VII. The original Final Fantasy VII, my all-time favorite game, used the ATB system, the active time battle system. How this worked is that you would wait for a bar to fill up for each of your party members, and once that bar was full, you could assign them a command that they would then execute. They've semi-replicated this in the remake, but we'll get to that in a little bit. This battle system was used in many of the late 90s Square games, and even goes back to games like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI on the previous console generation. One of the best things about this combat system is that while enemies could still attack you in real time, you could set them to wait so that you could take as much time to be strategic as you need. But players who favored more of a challenge could tell the game to just let enemies attack at all times. So you had to be quick and be able to think on your feet as you played because enemies weren't gonna stop attacking just cause you couldn't decide which spell to use. One of the problems with this combat system though, and really something that has been problematic for JRPGs as a whole, pretty much since their inception, is that while you'll make full use of your strategic options in boss fights, regular battles aren't that difficult. And often, all you would do is hit the attack button and just win. So let's go back even further. Chrono Trigger came out on the Super Nintendo, a full console generation before Final Fantasy VII did. This game also used an active time battle system, but had some interesting mechanics that sets it apart even from many of the games that have come after it. One of the best things about this combat system is that certain moves are positional. They'll hit areas of effect, and enemies can either be hit or avoid being hit based on their position. This also works with encounters where enemies will counterattack based on how close or far they are from your party. The very first boss fight of the game, which you see here, is one of those encounters. If this boss is too close to your party members, it won't be able to counterattack at all. This is something that you can learn from a, an optional fight earlier in the game. One of the best things about that to me is that it teaches you not just to attack. Yes, your bar is full, yes, you can always attack, but the counterattacks may come based on where you're at. It may be better to wait and let enemies group up so that you can hit more of them with a single move. This is an element that I think a lot of other games have missed out on. Yes, having turn-based combat is great, but when you can add other dynamics to it like this, it changes how you play the game as a whole. This doesn't even take into account the fact that there are combination moves. You've seen a lot of them in this video already, where two characters can consume both of their ATP bars at the same time and be able to attack with a stronger move than the two separate ones would be able to do. Chrono Trigger represents a great balance of being able to have turn-based combat, but still having enough mechanics to make combat feel deep and try to keep it from feeling repetitive. So now that we've seen this, let's go back even further to the original Final Fantasy a game that is as turn-based as turn-based gets. Welcome back to 1987. This is the first Final Fantasy game, and a game that would set a lot of the trends that you'll see in JRPGs for years to come. So this game is ultra turn-based. As you start the turn, you get to pick what each of your people will do. One of the first things you'll notice is that I'm targeting all different monsters when I do my moves. This is because if you kill a monster and someone else has still targeted them, they will just miss and do nothing. It won't automatically swap to the next target like you'd hope. One of the key differences with this style of gameplay 
is that we picked all of our moves at the start of a round. That means that all of my characters and all of the enemy monsters will all act within that round in an order that we cannot see and we can't adjust mid-round to decide, oh, we've taken this damage, we need to heal, or oh, we killed that monster, I need to target another monster. Because of this, combat could often be brutal. If enemies ganged up on one member, they could die, and all of your plans could go to nothing. Because, hey, maybe you've already cast a spell on that person and now they're dead. So not only is that person now gone, you've wasted one of your turns that you could have used to do something else. Longtime JRPG fans will know that many of the concepts that have survived in turn-based combat came from the original Final Fantasy. Things like obviously taking your turn, monsters being displayed on one side of the screen with your party being displayed on another, uh, hit points in the way they tick down and the way they're restored, have all come from the original Final Fantasy and have survived over many, many years. One of the other interesting things is that while there are a lot of quality of life issues with the original Final Fantasy, we can still see a lot of very turn-based aspects that have survived even into the current console generation. Now we're going to jump ahead to the PlayStation 2 and look at Final Fantasy X, another game way later on in the entries of Final Fantasy games, but it actually maintains more of this original turn-based style than even some of the games that happened in the interim. One of the first things you're going to see is that we still have random encounters in Final Fantasy X, despite the fact that this game came out multiple console generations later than the original Final Fantasy. Unlike the original, you can see in the top right corner that we can see the turn order and how it changes based on what moves we're going to do. We can also change characters during our turn and still not lose that turn, something that wouldn't have been possible with the original. You can take as long as you want to pick your moves in this, and you can swap out freely with no punishment whatsoever. It's very interesting though that this game is actually even more turn-based than some of the other ones that came before it, like Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. Obviously there's a huge difference graphically between this game and the original Final Fantasy, but many of the concepts have remained the same random encounters, truly turn-based combat without any active portion whatsoever. Even though a lot of the weird quality of life things have been fixed in this, it shows that you can still have turn-based combat much later and not have a problem with it even as more and more action games became available. Finally, we're going to jump to the current console generation and talk about two games that handled this differently. We're going to talk about Dragon Quest XI first, a game that stuck to its turn-based guns and has refused to move out of that formula, for better or worse, depending on who you ask. And then we're going to look at the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which decided to have a sort of hybrid action turn-based version based on how you want to play it. You can actually play it almost completely turn-based or almost completely action based on your preference. One of the first differences is that you can see enemies on the overworld now but it's still kind of akin to the random battle system of old. So in this game, you'll see, you can take as long as you want to pick as many options as you want and decide how you want to proceed. This game came out on the current console generation and has stuck very true to the origins of turn-based combat. You pick your moves, it's very slow, very methodical. Some people will hate this. We don't have to have turn-based combat anymore. Action is a thing that current consoles can support, even at tremendously high graphical fidelity. But for some people, taking off the stress of the time limit, of having to make decisions based solely on how much time you have to react to something, is a pleasant experience. And there are times where I don't want to have to think fast and play a game like an action game. But this game suffers from a lot of the traditional JRPG problems. Random battles can be kind of meaningless. While enemies can still sometimes pose a threat in these battles, it's often not much more than blowing through them with either your best abilities or attacks and calling it a day and moving on to the next one. There's no concern about, oh, you got caught off guard or oh, you failed to dodge something. It's turn-based. You don't have to dodge. 
Sure, there may be arbitrary misses and some random luck involved, but unlike in an action game or even a hybrid game, there's no avoiding damage. Let's take a look at Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game that decided to have a hybrid between action and turn-based combat. My turn. As we get into the remake's combat, one of the first things that you're gonna notice is that normal attacks are done with just the press of a single button, almost like it's an action game. As you do these normal attacks, you build up the ATB gauge. We used to do this by just waiting in old games, but now there's a more active component to it. When you have these ATB gauges, you can consume them to do special moves that deal extra damage. But while you're selecting them, you also slow down time tremendously giving you a chance to make a decision on what move to do without being under the pressure of having to play it like an action game. This is how they decided to make a hybrid between an action game's combat and a turn-based game's combat. Because of this, you get kind of the best of both worlds. Using shortcuts and things, you can actually play this like it's completely an action game and never have to slow down time. But if you're someone like me, that sometimes has to make a decision or has to think it through, it gives you the flexibility to slow down time and try to make sure that you're using your ATB gauges for the best thing possible. Where Final Fantasy X, with its completely turn-based combat, allowed you to swap characters, this sort of hybrid version in the Final Fantasy VII Remake allows you to swap characters in real time. Each character having their own specialties and things that they're good at I think this is actually one of the smartest moves they made in the combat system for the remake. If you need a swap to a ranged character, you can either just issue them a command from the menu, or you can actively take over that character and be able to use them to their maximum efficiency. The characters that you aren't using aren't the pinnacle of AI, they aren't going to help you win the fight without you having to do anything, but they do enough to feel like they're doing something and they don't put themselves in harm's way if they don't have to. Because of the more action-oriented nature of the combat, it operates almost like an MMO when it comes to having attacks that hit certain positions that you can actively avoid to prevent your party from taking damage. Sometimes the AI will get caught up in these, but that's not always a terrible thing. Keep you on your toes. One of the other things they integrated into this game was the stagger system from Final Fantasy XIII. As you fight, your encounter, you will actively build up this small bar below the enemy's health. When that bar gets full, the enemy is left vulnerable for massive damage. So as you fight, not only are you trying to avoid damage blocking where you can and optimize how you're dealing damage, you're also trying to build up that bar as quickly as possible, taking the enemy first into a pressured state and then into a staggered state so that you can deal the maximum damage possible. So the question becomes, does this even really count as a turn-based combat anymore? You can play it without ever having to slow down time, but you can also slow down time and only do normal attacks in real time, saving all of your special moves to only be done when time is slowed down. I guess it depends on who you ask. To me, if you're not gonna go with the Dragon Quest XI style of having a completely turn-based game, this is the best way to have a hybrid between an action game and a turn-based game. You still get to have the strategic elements of picking moves and having to time it correctly, but you never feel like you're sitting around waiting for a bar to fill up before you can actually do something while the enemy hits you. To me, that makes it a superior combat system to the original. Having the ability to jump between different characters and use their specialties all while trying to avoid damage and block in real time, but still maintaining the ability to strategically slow down the fight and issue the perfect command at the perfect time, make it a much more interesting battle system, especially in smaller encounters, where playing it correctly can mean the fight is over almost before it's begun. Let me know in the comments which style of combat you prefer. Do you think turn-based games still have a role in 2020? Or should all games be looking to move towards this sort of hybrid combat or just go for a straight up action game altogether? Regardless of what you think, I cannot recommend the Final Fantasy VII Remake strongly enough. It's a ton of fun and you should check it out. You should actually check out all the games I listed here. 
Even the ones that came out a long time ago have a lot of interesting things that you can see carry over into modern gaming. And for someone like me, I find that almost more interesting than the game itself. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.